Hey everyone, this is Brian. Uh, welcome to the 12th C Sharp tutorial. Um, go ahead and create a console application. Alright, now so far if you've been following my tutorials, we've discussed, you know, variables, the if statement, switch, do loop, for loop, for each, arrays, lists, and hash tables. We could go on and on with like stacks and queues and things of that nature, but you know, I honestly believe that programming is easy and in order to learn programming you're gonna learn by doing so we're just gonna jump right in with both feet no nonsense we're gonna cover classes so right click in your solution go add and select class and I believe you can also go project add class and then just from the window that appears select class notice how there's a bunch of stuff in here um, once we get going with these tutorials you're gonna know what each one of these items are so here's a class. Now you notice how it created a new file, class1.cs. You can click this tab and there's program.cs. The .cs stands obviously for C sharp. And over here you see here's our class1 and our program. Now program, this is what we're used to seeing. Namespace console application1 class program static void main. When you flip into class1 you notice how there's no uh, main function. See? program there's static void main class one no main why is that well as I've said in previous tutorials the static void main function or just the main function that's the starting point for every program so you only need one of those because it's well only gonna start in one place so what is a class and why do you need it if you know other languages you're probably snickering going come on I know what a class is but it's important to note that in dot net everything is an object so everything's a class because a class is a blueprint for an object let's just write that out blueprint so our class is a design of an object it's not an actual object it's just what's gonna be in that object so instead of class one let's call this person save it and we can actually just rename this file if we want to don't have to but you can now that we've got this person class, and notice how it's in the same namespace console application one. Same namespace. Remember, a namespace is like an apartment. Because these are in the same apartment, they can chit chat with each other. And no, chit chat's not really a technical term, but you know what I mean. Now we're just going to make a couple variables here, like, uh, for example, string name. And we'll say string.empty. You could have very well just said quote unquote, but just for the sake of argument, I'm going to do string.empty just to show you that the string class is actually a class. And then uh, int age. So this is our blueprint, our class for an object. We have not created an object yet. So let's jump back into program.cs and we want to actually work with this. So we're just going to say console read that way you know we have our console window that stays open now if you type in person notice how IntelliSense automatically pops up and puts it in the correct upper lower case however you have it spelled because remember case sensitive in C sharp go ahead and hit tab there's person so we've created a variable here or I should say we've created a type now we're going to create a variable C person equal new person now we've actually created an object. Remember, the person is just a blueprint. Here's our variable. We're creating a new instance of that blueprint, thus we're creating an object. That's very important to note because some people get class and objects mix, mixed up. And you'll, you'll hear it all the time, especially if you work in a programming shop. Some of the, the newer programmers go, oh yeah, I was running my class. No, you were running your object. Your class is a blueprint. So now that we've got our blueprint and we've created an object, what can we do with it? Well whatever we pretty much said. Now you notice how when you do person dot there's nothing there. I mean at least not the stuff we added. There's equals get hash code get type and to string. Well because everything's an object it automatically inherits the properties of an object. So it gets equals get hash code get type and to string. But what happened to name and age? Well we need to make these public. That's called an access modifier. By default, the access is private, meaning only this class, only this blueprint can access these items. So if we make name public just by putting the public keyword in front of this, 
and let's leave age the way it is. Go back here, press dot again. You notice how we can see name now, but we can't see age because age is still private. It's the same thing as writing private in front of it. And some people, myself included, will actually put the word private in front of the variable just to make it more clear that you intentionally want this to be private. It's a good way to hammer out bugs in your program. So you go back here, see, still name. So what we want to do is just flip this over to public, go back here, press dot again, you notice how magically there's age. Name and age. So we can say age equals, and we're just going to say, uh, oops, we'll say 36 because, well, I'm 36, and we'll say C person name equal, and just, you know, enter your name. Whoops, got to enter in the quotes. That'd be a good idea to do that. So now we have our object. We are manipulating uh, variables within that object. So we can run this after we actually do a little bit of, we'll just say right line, and we'll say C person, that name, and we'll say C person, age, and let's just say, put the word years in here, make it a little more friendly. Press F5 to run. And it says Brian is 36 years old. Now, what we're doing is called object-oriented programming. It's called object-oriented because, well, you work with objects. Person, our blueprint, we turn it into an object by creating an instance of that blueprint, our class. So let's actually make another one of these. Let's just call it C person 2. Not a very friendly name, but well, you get the drift here. And then let's just. I'm a big fan of copy and paste. If you've watched my other videos, you know that. So let's just do a little magic here. Now we've got two instances of our class we've got C person and C person 2. Both the same class, both of the person class, but there's two different instances of it. And that'll become very clear when we do this. Let's say console, right line. And let's do C person 2 and C person 2. So we're going to print out the values of the name and age for C person and C person 2. And you'll see that although they're the same class, they hold different properties. Brian is 36 years old, Heather is 18 years old. So that is the power of object oriented programming. You can make a blueprint. And inside that blueprint, you can control um, what the object does. And it gets much more complex than this. So we're going to cover all these in uh, the next tutorials. For example, functions. You can create blocks of code that do certain things. But I just wanted to introduce you to the concept of a class and a blueprint. If this is new to you, um, don't get overwhelmed. Think of it as a blueprint. You're quite literally drawing a blueprint for an object. An object is just a thing. Then you create an instance of that blueprint when you say new and then whatever the blueprint name is. And these parentheses is a constructor, meaning you're constructing the object. Well, that's all for this tutorial. I hope you found this educational and entertaining, and thank you for watching.